In this screencast, I want to talk about a couple of approximation algorithms for problems for which there is no polynomial time algorithm. In order to talk about these and be able to compare algorithms that are approximation algorithms, we're going to need some metric for which to compare them. And the metric we're going to use is uh, related to something called the accuracy ratio. Now, what we want is some kind of ratio that works for both minimization and maximization problems. So let's suppose we've got a minimization problem. Then we know that the solution given by our algorithm, which we write this way, f of s sub a for algorithm, and we're going to divide it by the function, the objective value of the objective function given by this for the optimal solution. So this ratio is going to be greater than 1 for a minimization problem. For a maximization problem, we're going to flip it because then the optimal solution will be getting a will have a bigger will be a bigger number than the approximation so solution so again both these numbers will be greater than 1 that will allow us to compare have some sort of standard way of thinking about uh, both maximization and minimum pr minimization problems and how well they're performing now the problem with the accuracy ratio is really it's for a problem instance and what we really want is something to measure it for all over all the different instances of the, of the uh, problem. So we'll talk about that in a second. But first, just to give you a quick example here, suppose we're doing 0-1 knapsack. That's a maximization problem. And the optimal solution is 100. That's the value that the thief can put into the knapsack. And the value by some greedy solution is 80. Then this accuracy ratio is 1.25. So that gives you a sort of a feel for how this might work on a real problem. Now on this slide, I want to get a metric, a measure for how good an, algor an approximation algorithm is for all instances of a problem. So now what we're looking for is sort of a bound, right, on the accuracy ratio. In, over all the problems. And so that's typically called, if, if there is such a bound, we call it a C approximation. And again, this will work for both maximization and minimization problems, and C will always be bigger than 1. So even without the actual solution, uh, we're going to be able to show that there are problems for which there is a C approximation. And the way we're going to be able to do that, even though we're not going to know what F of S star is what the optimal value of the optimal solution is, we can get a bound on it, and that will enable us to get a bound on this ratio. So now let's talk about a concrete example. Uh, remember TSP, the idea is to find a tour that has the minimum length, minimum weight tour, that visits all the cities exactly once and returns to its starting city. So one greedy algorithm for this is what's called nearest neighbor, and you just pick a starting city, and you go to the closest neighbor, just like it says. So you go to B. Then here, closest neighbor to B is C. Closest neighbor to C is D. And then you're stuck at D. You can't take any of these short edges. You have to go back to A at this point, because you can't revisit any places you've already been. You need to go back to the originating vertex. And so you get this 6. So that gives you a tour that's of length 11, Whereas the shortest tour in this case is actually go from A to B, B to D, to C, and to A, which you have length 10. Now, if you stop and think about it for a second, there's nothing, well, that same situation would occur no matter what this number is. So you can make this number a million, and all of a sudden your, your tour given to you by nearest neighbor is going to be horrendously off. And so... What that leads to, if you're careful about writing it all down, is that the ratio here, there's no C, finite C approximation, basically. Another greedy algorithm that's performed somewhat better is to sort the edges in non-decreasing order of weights and initialize the set of tour at edges constructed via an empty set, and then add the edges. So this is more sort of like Kruskal's algorithm for minimum spanning tree, whereas nearest neighbor is more like Prim's algorithm for minimum spanning tree. And basically, you just keep adding edges uh, in order of their size, and but you have to avoid making a vertex of degree 3, 
or any cycle less than n. And you just keep do that, doing that until you get a tour. If you perform this on the uh, example we did for nearest neighbor, you'll see that it basically does the same thing on that simple example. So again, there's no finite C approximation for this. However, there is a, um, some finite approximations for a specific situation where we restrict the TSP to a certain kind of uh, to a certain kind of graph, namely what's called a metric TSP. And in the metric TSP, which I'll talk about in some more detail, we're going to use an algorithm, an approximation algorithm called twice around the tree. So first I want to talk about that. So to construct the approximation using twice around the tree, the first thing you do is construct a minimum spanning tree. That's the tree in twice around the tree. And you can either use Prim's or Kruskal's algorithm for that. It doesn't matter. And then starting at some arbitrary vertex, do depth first search. Okay, and when you do depth first search, this is a tree. So when you do depth first search, all you're going to do is walk around the tree and... There won't be any backward edges, and what you'll do is you'll get a path, and the path will basically go through each edge twice. We'll see that in the example, and return to the starting vertex. So this, and then create a tour from the circuit constructed in two by making shortcuts. So let's see how that plays out in practice on a simple example. Here's our simple example. Here's a weighted graph. And we want to find the twice around the tree t approximation to the solution to the traveling salesperson problem for this graph. So what do, you, do we do? We construct the minimum spanning tree. What's the minimum spanning tree look like? It looks like this. It's got this edge from A to B, the edge from B to C, the edge from B to D, and the edge from D to E. So that's the minimum spanning tree. And then the step, step one, we construct that. And then we do depth first search. So when we do depth first search, we start at A, go to B, go to C. C doesn't have any um, neighbors. So we come back to B, then over to D, up to E, back to D, and back to A. And you can see well, we've gone twice around the minimum spanning tree. Now what we want to do is find the shortcuts. So where are the shortcuts? Well, here's where it's when we're at C, we try to go back to B, but B's already been visited. So what we would do is go to the next node along the path, okay, and then use this edge. And then we continue on and we get to E. Uh, e, D has already been visited, so we can't, we don't want to go to there. We go look at B, B has already been visited, so we don't go to there. We come back up over at A. And we can now, A has not been visited, well, A is a starting vertex and has not been visited on the path. And so we go back to A. So now, so the approximate tour is now just looks like that. So that's our tour. Now think about what we did. We took these shortcuts. And what we're doing is, if we think of this as just a little triangle here, what we're doing is we've got the one side... And so for certain instances, metric instances, if it satisfies the triangle inequality, then that means that this side has to be shorter than the sum of the two sides. Right? That's just what the triangle, if you remember back to your high school geometry, that's just what the triangle inequality says. We get up to here, right? We look over here. This, we might be tempted to use this side. Well, this side, if we hadn't already visited B, the triangle inequality says that that's shorter than these two, and then this side plus this side is going to be bigger than that side. So all we're doing when we're taking these shortcuts is we're making the length of the tour shorter. So now I want to formalize this a little bit. Um, so here's the, how we're going to do that. We're going to call an instance of TSP metric if its distance is satis two, satisfied two conditions symmetric and the triangle inequality holds for any two city three cities so this is just high school geometry and we're going to use this 
so that in this situation we can so show that twice around the tree is a two approximation. Now, it's important to point out here that if p is not equal to np, so in other words, if there are problems in np that do not have polynomial time solutions, in other words, we can prove they do not have polynomial time algorithms that solve them, then there does not exist a polynomial time approximation for TSP with a finite performance ratio. So given the state of the world right now, where many of the folks believe that P is not equal to NP, then it's clear that um, from this theorem that we can't get a finite performance relation, performance ratio. So I want to emphasize that because to emphasize the fact that we're restricting ourselves to only certain types of TSP problems, namely those that are metric, where the edges, the distances on the edges satisfy the triangle inequality. So here's the proof. The proof is relatively simple, that uh, twice around the tree is a two approximation for metric instances of the TSP. So here we go, um, and we're just going to prove it directly. The length of a minimum spanning tree must be, yes, less than the length of the optimal tour. Well, if you stop and think about it, that's pretty obvious, right? Because otherwise, if the length of the minimum spanning tree was greater than the optimal tour, we just delete one edge from the optimal tour. That would shorten it. And the optimal tour without that edge is a spanning tree. So that's impossible. We'd end up with something, a uh, spanning tree, that was less than the minimum spanning tree. And that's not possible. So the length of the optimal tour has to be bigger than the minimum length of the minimum spanning tree. Okay, now... The path constructed by twice around the tree algorithm begins with a length of two times the length of the minimum spanning tree. That's obvious, right? Because you're just using every edge in the minimum spanning tree twice. And then, since the triangle inequality holds for metric instances, that means the length of the twice around the tree path right, must be less than or equal to two times the length of the minimum spanning tree. Because the twice around the tree path, right, um, that's generated by the algorithm, it conceptually replaces two sides of the triangle with the third side of the triangle. So basically we're just making the path that we get from depth first search into this twice around the tree path by taking shortcuts. So it must be shorter than two times the length of the minimum spanning tree. So putting these two inequalities together, bingo, we're gonna be done. The length of the twice around the tree path is less than or equal to two times the length of the minimum spanning tree, which is less than or equal to two times the optimal tour, just multiplying this inequality by two. And so now divide both sides by uh, the length of the optimal tour, okay? And we get that that has to be less than or equal to two. That's that just the condition that the uh, twice around the tree path is a two approximation for Euclidean instances of the TSP. It's really pretty clever. Notice, I mean, we're making, we're t getting this bound on the optimal tour. And so that's what allows us to find the two approximation. So a two approximation may not sound that great, but now what we're going to look at is a way to improve it uh, iteratively, sort of an iterative improvement add-on to an approximation. So here's the idea. We're going to start with some initial tour. We might get that from twice around the tree, or actually there are some better algorithms, and I'll probably talk about one of those in a later screencast. And on each iteration, you find a tour that's close to the current tour. And by close, I mean by just exchanging a few edges. And if the new tour is shorter, then make it the current tour. Otherwise, just consider another edge change. You do this until basically you're not doing any better, um, and there are ways to uh, even enhance this. But here's the idea for what's called two-opt. We just have these two edges that we're going to see if we can replace and do better with. So we identify those, and then we take um, the vertices at the edge of these two components and connect them so that we get another tour. 
bingo. And then we check the length of that tour compared with this tour. And if it's better, then we switch to this tour. And we do it again. If it's not better, we stay with this tour, but pick two other edges. Keep doing that until it appears that we can't do any better. Then there are variations on this where instead of two ops, we can do three ops where we replace three edges, four ops, etc. That can be used if we want to move, uh, if we need to think we can move farther away from the original uh, tour and perhaps get better improvement. So again, the point of this whole screencast was to give you some idea about how you can have approximations and get, get a good estimate for how well they perform. In particular, we looked at traveling salesperson problem, found a two approximation for it, and then briefly discussed ways to potentially improve that. In a future screencast, I'll try to talk about a, a different approximation that performs even better.